Now, it was kind of a shock to the system to hear about Morgan Moses being granted a request for trade. I mean, we're still getting over the idea of Ryan Kerrigan playing for the Philadelphia Eagles. But when you think about it, we probably should have seen this come. With Ron Rivera drafting Samuel Cosme in the second round of this year's draft, the writing was probably on the wall for Morgan Moses anyway. The draft tends to be like this. If your player is getting drafted within that first three rounds, they're very likely to be playing in their first year. Now one exception might be if that player is a quarterback. However, with any of the other positions, usually you're going to see them either in heavy rotation if not starting out right. Now I'm sure when Morgan Moses heard about Cosme getting drafted, he knew his days in Washington were numbered. And yes, it will save us about $7 million off his salary cap either if we trade him away or if we outright cut him. Now certainly we would like to be able to get something out of the loss of Morgan Moses, but we shall see. Now it might seem a bit disingenuous of Ron Rivera to replace such a consistent player as Morgan Moses. I mean, he has played if not started every single game since 2015. He's also shown that he's a very versatile player by playing left tackle for us for a game. And like Ryan Kerrigan, Morgan Moses has played his butt off. I mean, he's been very dependable. He's done everything we've asked for him to do. However, if you start to see what Ron Rivera is wanting to do, you realize this needs to happen. Ron Rivera wants to have one of the youngest teams in the NFL if not the youngest team. And that means that you're gonna have a lot of players playing on rookie contracts, which is going to make managing the salary cap a little less stressful. And also it's gonna free up some funds to extend players you need to extend, such as Jonathan Allen. Now, Moses has been a very solid player for us. He's, he's played through injury. Now he will tend to get the occasional holding penalty called against him. But for the most part, his play has been pretty clean and yet nasty. Now, when it comes to your offensive line, you need guys who mesh well together. And as you always seem to hear, you need your offensive line time to gel. And that basically means that those guys work together. They need to know the tendencies of the guys that they work beside of. You know, are they working beside the left tackle or the guard or the center? Whatever it may be, they need to be able to chip this defender while blocking the guy that they are assigned to. In layman's terms, a great offensive line is going to be one that has guys who don't just simply block the guys that they're assigned to because as we all know the defense is going to do run blitzes they're going to do pass blitzes and often times they're going to send more guys than what the offensive line can block so it's imperative that these guys know how to work together on how to block all of these blitzes and how to keep their quarterback upright while doing their job. So this is why it's very likely you might see some growing pains in the beginning here. However, one thing's for certain, Ron Rivera is going to make sure that he fields the best players in those positions come week one of the season. And while the thought of Morgan Moses getting traded or outright cut just, well, kind of sucks, we have still managed to maintain very good depth on the offensive line. In fact, I would not doubt if Sam Cosme doesn't wind up being an upgrade eventually to Morgan Moses. So my prediction week one, we're probably going to see Charles Leno starting at left tackle, uh, Eric Flowers at left guard, of course Chase Rullier is going to be the center, and Brandon Sheriff is going to be the right guard, and then we're going to have Sam Cosme starting at right tackle. And then you're going to have some guys that you can rotate in who played well for us, you know, guys like Cornelius Lucas, uh, Jerron Christian, and then the Wesses, uh, Schweitzer, and Martin. And when you talk about versatility, Cosme can play both left tackle and right tackle. You've got the guys, like I mentioned before, Cornelius Lucas, Jerron Christian, who could come in and play left tackle if need be. They could probably also play a guard position. And this is one thing that Ron Rivera talks about, and it's kind of become his catchphrase, if you will. He always talks about position flex. He wants guys who can play more than one position. And when you have guys like that on the offensive line, then that's when you really start to have something special. Now think back to the days of the Hogs. 
especially in the later years as those guys started to age. Those guys wind up getting kind of shifted around on the offensive line, but yet they still yielded the same results. They still created huge running lanes for the running backs and they were still able to protect the quarterbacks. So when you look at our offensive line, we're not in bad shape for 2020. Yes, we will be losing Morgan Moses, but we're gaining a second round talent who should be able to come in and make an immediate impact. We'll still have Brandon Share for one more year. Of course, we'll have Chase Roulier. We'll have a former Pro Bowl player in Charles Leno starting at left tackle and who, like Morgan Moses, has pretty much started every single game since, what, 2014? And, of course, Eric Flowers, who came in to us in 2019, played really well for us, left for Miami last year, and is back with the team in 2021. Now, next season will definitely be the big question mark at right guard. I believe it's highly unlikely we're going to be able to work out a deal with Brandon Sheriff, and so likely he's going to head off to greener pastures next season. So the question is, are we going to have enough talent already on the offensive line or on the team to fill that right guard position? Or do we think that we're going to have to go into next year's draft or free agency? Either way, I do believe that making sure that we maintain a good amount of depth for the offensive line and having the best guys possible to start and to gel on that offensive line is imperative to our success. Hey, if you like this channel and you really want to support us, please consider subscribing to this channel. As well, I've also created a Patreon page. So if you would like to support this channel through Patreon, I would really, I would love it. And your help will help to support this channel to make it grow because I want this channel to be a great channel for all of you guys to sit back and enjoy. Hell to the Washington football team. Let's go Maniacs.